Hi, we're out on the range today, so please bear with gunfire you hear in the background. Now, recently a viewer sent me this Buffalo Bore 38 ammunition and asked me to test it, so here we are. This is Buffalo Bore 38 Special Plus P with a 110 grain copper hollow point. Now, there's a couple of things about this ammunition. One, Buffalo Bore has a reputation for being loaded really hot. It's supposed to be very powerful ammunition. And two, this 110 grain hollow point is lead free. It's just a copper projectile. So how will that stack up against a couple of other types of 38 Special? Now this is Hornady Critical Defense 38 Special Plus P with a 110 grain ballistic tip. And this is Corbon 38 Special Plus P with a 110 grain hollow point. And the test gun I'm going to use today is the Smith & Wesson Model 637 with a 1 and 7 8 inch barrel. I consider it representative of the types of concealed carry 38s most people will have. So let's shoot all this ammunition side by side and see what kind of results we get. We've got our chronograph set up at 7 yards and we'll start with our Hornady Critical Defense. Nine hundred and sixty-one. Nine hundred and ninety-two. One thousand and two. Nine hundred and eighty-eight. Now let's see how that compares to the others. Now let's try our Corbon. 1,078. 1,099. 1,076. 1,071. Now let's see how those compare to the buffalo bore. And now let's try our buffalo bore. 1190. 12.15. 12.16. 11.69. Now let's go crunch the numbers. So how'd we do? Now remember these are all 110 grain projectiles, so we'd expect the velocity to be a little higher than the 125 grain projectile that's most common in 38 plus P ammunition. And with our critical defense we get a velocity of 985. Now that's not bad, but with the Corbon we get 1081. That's 96 feet per second more. And with the Buffalo Bore we get 1197. That's 116 feet per second more than the Corbon. So there's no question the Buffalo Bore is loaded hot, and it is a lot more powerful than our other two ammunitions. However, power does not always translate directly into effectiveness. So let's shoot a different medium that I would hope would shed some light on the effectiveness of this ammunition. Now this very complex setup, for those who haven't seen it before, is called the meat target. It's a pork steak pectoral followed by pork ribs, followed by a bag of oranges to simulate lung tissue. This time of year I can't get watermelons. More pork ribs behind that leather jacket skin, and then the lining of the leather jacket will act as rudimentary clothing. And behind that, as always, the high-tech fleece bullet stop. Now I'll go back seven yards and I'll shoot this with the Model 637, and we'll start with our Corbon ammunition. 9-9. Here's our four projectiles, and you can see that the expansion is pretty good, but inconsistent. And all four of these were stopped by the leather jacket skin on the back of the target. Now let's take a look at the meat target. Now we've got our meat target disassembled, and we see that where the bullets went through on the front, where they hit a rib, shattered it. Did a lot of damage to our orange lung tissue. And going out the ribs on the back, not a lot of damage there. And as I said before, all four projectiles were stopped by the leather jacket skin on the back of the target. So let's put up a new meat target and we'll see how well the buffalo bore ammunition does. And with our buffalo bore ammunition, all four of these hit the meat target. We see one with very good expansion, a couple with moderate expansion, and one that did not expand at all. All of these were stopped by the leather jacket skin on the back of the target. This one made it through to about the 20th layer of fleece. Now with our buffalo bore ammunition, we see that with the ribs on the front where the projectiles hit the ribs, shattered them. A lot of damage to our orange lung tissue. And three of the four projectiles were stopped by the leather jacket skin on the back of the target. The one that wasn't was the one that didn't expand. 
I'm not going to shoot a meat target with the Hornady Critical Defense because it's a ballistic tip, not a hollow point that could be construed as an unfair comparison. But there is one other type of ammunition I want to shoot. Now I didn't shoot the meat target with the Hornady Critical Defense ammunition because it's a ballistic tip. It could be construed as an unfair test. And given the chronograph results, I really didn't think there was much point to it. However, the two high dollar ammunitions, the Buffalo Bore and the Corbon, seem to give pretty good performance. But now, just as a basis of comparison, I have this revolver loaded with Remington Green and White Box 38 Special Plus P 125 grain semi jacketed hollow point. A really entry level low tech 38 Plus P round. So let's go back seven yards and shoot the meat target with this, just as a basis of comparison. And we see a couple of them with good expansion and a couple of them with mediocre expansion. These two with good expansion were stopped by the leather jacket skin on the back of the target, and these two made it through to about the third layer of fleece. Now let's take a look at the meat target. And now we've got our meat target torn apart, but first a couple of things. The question comes up a lot, so I have to address it. This is an earplug case, and yes, I wear earplugs with every shot I take. These are shooting glasses, and although I don't wear them for things like paper targets, for things like the meat target, Yes, I do use shooting glasses. Now that having been said, let's see how we did on this with our Remington ammunition. For the ribs on the front where the bullets hit the ribs, shattered them. Did some pretty good damage to our orange lung tissue, and the ribs on the back where the bullets hit the ribs broke them too. And the two bullets that expanded well were stopped by the leather jacket skin on the back of the targets, the ones that didn't expand so well by about the third layer of fleece. So what can we take from all of this? Well, there's no question that the Buffalo Bore ammunition is very powerful, but is it really more effective than things like the Corbon or than this cheap Remington stuff? We saw that the expansion was good, but we had one bullet that didn't expand at all. And that was really disappointing. And even though it's really high velocity, did it do any more damage to our orange lung tissue than the slow bullets did? You know, I'd say probably yes, marginally. But there's no question that ammunitions like the Buffalo Bore are a lot more expensive and a lot less available than cheap stuff like the Remington ammo I used here. So is it worth the extra cost and the extra searching to get it? You be the judge. So as always, don't try this at home, I'm what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the Buffalo Bore ammunition video.